Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. I am so excited about this. I'm joined by two good friends, Paul and Marilyn Hooper, who live in Homer, Alaska. And uh, these guys are literally some of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. They're Holy, Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, kingdom-loving, mm-hmm. Jesus people, mm-hmm. kind of hippie, glory <laughs> people. They A little bit of hippie in there. And um, they've had a crazy, a crazy experience that I can't wait for you guys to hear about. Um, but I first, just introduce yourself. Tell everybody who you are, where you're from. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, Paul and Marilyn Huber. Uh, we are both a uh, couple of kids that grew up in the wilderness, me in northern Minnesota, her in southern New Mexico, and uh, we have lived pretty much all over the U.S. Both of us had encounters mm-hmm. uh, with the Lord back in the, uh, the mid-80s that were life-changing, and we met, mm-hmm. fell in love, got married, and, and uh, just ended up in Alaska because of what we really felt like was the calling, like we were supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got they background. literally live in the most gorgeous place on earth. It's for really three fun. months out of the year. <laughs> I mean, it's gorgeous all the time. But, I mean, it literally is so beautiful, guys. It, it, and, and if you're out there watching this and you've always wanted to go to Homer, Alaska, you need to go stay in their inn. But anyway, go ahead. Yes, yes, <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah, so we really felt like Alaska was the calling. I backpacked there in 1998, had no intention mm-hmm. of living in Alaska mm-hmm. at all. I had an expiring ticket that I had to use, and Alaska was one of the few states I hadn't been to yet. So... Grabbed a couple of buddies back back there and uh, ended up in Homer by accident last day of the trip. And up to that point, yeah, Alaska's great, wild, big, everything that you'd imagine of mm-hmm. it. Uh, once I got to Homer, it really felt like a calling. Like there was mm-hmm. something special about this place that we belonged yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, uh, yeah, she moved up a I year later, sight, sight unseen. unseen. And I felt like I was going to the utter parts of the earth, which you are kind of. And like some people call us still and ask if, you know, what currency do we use? <laughs> and will it be, will there be snow on the ground? And it sounds silly, but I had those same questions because yeah. I'd never been there. And almost all of the video footage up until that time, this was 22 years ago, was always Alaska in the winter. Yeah. So yeah. now when I got there, I, um, I was like, oh my gosh, I make sense here. This is yeah. my home. I'm yeah. staying. So I just, awesome. I've always made sense there. I don't That's make amazing. as much sense down here. I make a lot of sense <laughs> up there. <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. And so you guys run an inn on mm-hmm. the water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to create a job when you get there. So you yes. Yeah. And, and we had always been drugging people home and they lived on our sofa and ate all our food for free. So we thought, I wonder if we could do that and have people pay us. And it's worked out. <laughs> it has worked out. It's a beautiful, beautiful inn. My wife and I have stayed there, and it's it's an incredible place. You've been involved in ministry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You love America. You're patriots. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and and you've held the line throughout the years, mm-hmm. and you're called to be a believer and a, to be a good citizen. So let's fast forward. Tell us uh, what happened and where you were on January 6th, 2021. Yeah. Okay. Well, January 6th was... Uh, uh, as most of you would know, uh, the gathering at the Capitol to uh, basically protest the outcome of the election. So that having been said, uh, we had a wedding in the Black Hills mm-hmm. and we decided to go to uh, Arizona on vacation. Like and you mentioned, like, after yeah. the three months, it gets pretty cold yeah. and a little dark <laughs> and you got to get out to get some sunshine yeah. in play. So that we were double dipping. Once you get out, you got to... <laughs> Stay gotta, out for a yeah. little bit. Gotta stay out for a little bit. So we were in uh, Scottsdale for a few days, but before then, by the time we had booked our tickets, we realized January 6th, the calling mm-hmm. was to go. We looked at our flights and went, yeah, you know, we'll just extend a little bit further and we'll yeah. just make a roundabout. We'll go to D.C. Mm-hmm. 36 with- bucks. <laughs> right. So it was a cheap decision. <laughs> say we were really, you know, how invested are you? 36 bucks? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. We can do that. Yeah. yeah so, so what we- happened on that day? So, okay, we arrived uh, on the night of the 5th, late, got up, cut an Uber to the Capitol, got dropped Mm -hmm. off. And then uh, we were one of the early ones there. So we went in ahead of most of the crowd into the ellipse, and we were maybe 50 yards away from Trump, Donald Trump Jr., uh, Giuliani, had all these speakers going on. So we really had no intention of uh, necessarily even having to go to the Capitol. Uh, I mean, it was part of the plan, but by the time... They were done speaking. It was already about 1.15. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. there was a protest planned at 1 o'clock at the Capitol. For whatever reason, Trump held the crowd over. 
And so the crowd mm -hmm. flooded out and we're at the backside of half million. So I don't know how many people were there, but let's say half million people. We were in the backside. I mean, it was as far as you could as see. Far as far as, as the see. eye could see, yeah. it was stunning. It was awesome. So many well, patriots such there. Such gracious people too. And we had heard a lot of the video footage about rallies and protests on all different types of, you know, BLM or patriot rallies. And there was always altercations. So we were nervous. You yeah. know, we were nervous, but when we were there, it felt completely safe. Everybody was yeah. super gracious. Yeah. People watched out after each other's stuff. But we are, you know, we're from Alaska. We don't do lines. We don't stand in lines. And there were a million people in front of us for a 40 minute walk to the Capitol. And so we're like, eh, we'll stay here and hang out and talk to Epic Times was there. So we cornered Joshua yeah. Phillips and got a picture with him. And, and we went and found Paul's backpack and it was still sitting there with all this stuff in it. And then uh, we started trying to go towards the Capitol because we thought like, well, we don't have to catch our flight quite yet. We went the wrong way. There's only like two ways to go. <laughs> we went the wrong way. And we ended up like somewhere else and getting turned back. And then we stopped and had hot dogs. And then we saw sirens everywhere. And so we're like, oh no, problems. You know, there's a clash happening. We might as well forget even heading that direction. But then different people were coming by saying like, no, the Capitol was breached. and. There's all kinds of people involved. It's not just Antifa. There appears to be patriots going into, and but we don't really know. There's no coverage. We can't get any word. There's no, there's no one speaking to the people there. Mm. So we're like, well, who doesn't like to rub her neck and watch a good car accident, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so like, Let's meander that way, and as long as it feels safe. So we just kind of kept creeping towards it, and it never felt unsafe. And then when we got there, it just looked like a big carnival. People hanging off of everything, anything they oh could climb gosh. on, people were hanging on. And it was like a huge Animal House video or something. <laughs> You're like, this is kind of cool. It's so very respectful. I mean, people were, yeah. were not destroying any property. Yeah. You look over on one side, there'd be a group of people praying together. There yeah. was worship music going over here, another guy over people here. People with was, megaphones sharing whatever you know, their message Declaring was. the Second Amendment of the Constitution. It was very patriotic. And, and know, there was zero many, many police believers. presence that we could see. There was zero wow. Capitol Police, nobody giving any instructions. We could see a few up on the balcony, but they appeared to be taking selfies with the other people hanging out up there. And lots uh, of kids. Children of kids. everywhere, baby strollers everywhere. Yeah, and I kept thinking in my mind, why don't they give some direction to the people? We can't tell what's going on. There's all these reports coming out. Could you see that people out. are going into the Capitol? You could. There was like a there was, snake line. Yeah, a line about uh, probably 300 yards winding up. Wow. And people were lined up like they were going on to and Space Mountain at DC yeah. or at uh, uh, yeah. Disney. So, yeah. And we but, said like, oh, looks like we missed the party. And they're like, oh no, not at all. Just get in line. They're letting anybody, they're letting everybody in. And we're like, hmm, I saw some people come out bloody. I think we should skip that. Plus we really wouldn't have time. And it just sounds like a bad idea. So then we, we hung out and kind of people watched for 20 minutes and then we headed to our plane. That was a very smart decision. <laughs> <laughs> a very smart decision. But the whole thing felt weird. Yeah. It felt like everybody was there relaxed, but there was no direction. And there were supposedly lots of things happening. Some people, somebody had been shot, we were told, but nobody knew for sure. But there was no one giving any direction. Were your phones working? No. no. No There's signal. No, signal. no signal, you can't tell what's going on. And there were plenty of people speaking through megaphones, sharing whatever their shtick was. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking, why doesn't a Capitol Police come and borrow one of the speaker systems and tell people what they want them to do? Yeah. They never told anybody anything. So there was zero direction, zero instruction. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's something weird going on here. Yeah. This is not normal. This, is, this isn't right. But everybody's wow. just hanging out, hoping somebody's gonna come out and tell them what's happening. That's and weird. nobody ever so, did. So what pro, how much of the crowd that was at the rally with the mm. president came over to the Capitol? Tons of people left and went home because the rally ended so late. Right. But it still looked like there were as many people eventually there. There was a yeah. sea of humanity. There was a, just was, a sea of people. Yeah, you can only see so far. Yeah. <laughs> there totally. was just people <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Wow. But again, super respectful, you know, eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, hanging out with each other, going like, do you know what's going on? Do you know what's going on? No, I heard this. What did you hear? Did you go inside? Yeah, it was awesome. We got to look around and take pictures. Really? They're just like, yeah, just go out good. And we're like, hmm, this is just too weird. Yeah. So then what happened? So then you left, went home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see on the news what was, what was happening? Yeah. We did. And mm -hmm. what, what, what were you thinking? 
It felt like a wow. misrepresentation. Yeah. Yeah, like an intentional misrepresentation to me. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, but we again, we arrived two hours after that footage. Right. So we don't know it was happening at the front of the line, but we also knew that the people were all at the rally when that stuff started. Yeah. So we were wondering, and we heard reports that there were van loads of people, the vans that pulled up with no windows and a bunch of people jumped out and bought like Trump gear and then, but who knows, it was all, we didn't see it. Right. So it was all right. hearsay to us. Well, I remember I was in Dallas and I was filming at Daystar and uh, then I got, got this notification on my phone, the Capitol has been breached, it's been stormed. And I was, and then I started looking at pictures and you know, the, the bro with the horns on and the face paint was just walking through the lines through the like <laughs> casually walking. And I'm like, he doesn't have any weapons. And I'm like, how, how are these are guys taking him? over and the he has Capitol? no plan. There's no plan. You know, He's... I've been to the Capitol uh, many times mm -hmm. and the security is pretty tight yeah. there, oh, yeah. you know? And, and so I'm just kind of thinking, yep. this doesn't add up. Now, so you left, you went home. And, uh, and our, I think my overriding experience of being there was I have never been to a rally or a protest. And I have never been, I've been to carnivals and mm -hmm. fairs where there's lots of people or concerts. I've never been, it was like a holy ground space there. Mm -hmm. And other people I've talked to who were there said they had the same sense and the same experience. I got the sense that there were a million people there who had eyes on, were waking up that there's things going on that shouldn't be happening. And they were just coming to see if they could hold the line, stand on a spot and mm -hmm. say, hey, we're watching and we're gonna hold you accountable. Yeah. And the overriding sense I got was of the tremendous restraint mm -hmm. of the people. Because if anyone had wanted to overwhelm the Capitol, there was no presence there that could have kept hundreds of thousands, yeah. half, half a million, a million people back. Right. And they just all stood there and watched. Right. And I thought the amazing restraint for people who are crying out for a nation they're afraid is falling. Right. And yeah. that was the sense there. It was right. really holy ground. It right. was really beautiful. So to mm -hmm. see it represented and misrepresented um, has been hard, you know, has been hard on the heart. Yeah. So did you guys get, did you get a lot of pushback from friends or people that knew that you were there after what happened? A lot oh. of com people confused and wondering. Right. Yeah. A lot of people confused and wondering. So you get to kind of share your personal yeah. witness, what you witnessed and they go like, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But it's confusing. And if, and I tell people, if you watch the video footage, notice how little there is because it's the same 10 minutes of somebody or a few people doing you know shenanigans i call them yeah. and that's what's played and looped over and over right. again you're yeah. talking a sea <clears throat> of humanity right and hours and hours that the capital was left open for people to go through right and that's all they could get yeah look mm -hmm. how little happened mm -hmm. even when we had our april 20, uh, 28th visit which we're going to yeah. go into we got i got to speak directly with the capitol police because she f flew out yeah and I asked her, I have questions for you. Why did they leave you so unprotected when they knew there was already squawking that there would be some bad players there? Why did right. none of the Capitol Police have riot gear? Yeah. Why did they send a bunch of them home at 10 a.m., according to a, a French reporter, and never called them back? Why did they use bicycle racks? Why did some racks? of them apparently open the door? Why did, right. Right, why right. did, why did the, if I were you, I would be upset that they left you so vulnerable right. and unprotected yeah. when they knew there were gonna be some troublemakers because there are always troublemakers right. in a yeah. group, big group. Mm -hmm. And then left you guys in your regular like touring gear. Yeah, and totally. she's And she was, she said, well, I can't really speak directly to it, but there's a lot of questions that, that we still don't understand yeah. and know. Mm -hmm. So she was confused by it too. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like a lot of people were being played and used. Right. Um, and I don't think it was a, a forthright thing going on. And so just a, a, a quick uh, commercial break to, to talk about Ron Johnson, senator out of Wisconsin. He's mm -hmm. the only one on Capitol Hill that is going and saying, what about the rest of the video that you're not showing mm -hmm. us? You've got videos showing Capitol Police opening the doors up to the crowd, swinging them open, and over 300 people on the one wing went into the Capitol completely 
on, on, you know, on touch. They just walked right through. So Ron Johnson, just to say Ron Johnson's making noise, we have to be praying mm -hmm. for Ron Johnson. Yeah. He's the only mm -hmm. one on Capitol Hill that's asking the tough questions. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's fast forward to April 28th, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So you're in Homer mm -hmm. at the inn <laughs> at your house. What happens? We're well, sleeping. I, <laughs> we're sleeping. I'm lounging in my pajamas, uh, kicked back in my bed, taking care of my morning emails. My lovely wife is sleeping next to me. And at 9 o'clock, I could hear some crash, boom, bang happening on the other side of the house. And I really thought it was my, my middle daughter who every once in a while would show up and go, Dad, time to go to work. Let's get going. She's helping me uh, do some, uh, some carpentry work and so forth. So I really thought it was her. So I half awake went around the corner and by the time I got almost to the entry hallway into the dining room and, and kitchen, I heard this loud male voice, FBI, come out with your hands up. Mm -hmm. And so I came around the corner with six or seven guns pointed right at my head. Whoa. I had no idea mm -hmm. what they're doing in my home. Uh, Marilyn was right behind me, just a few seconds behind me. So mm -hmm. they barked out, okay, we want you to take uh, two steps back and tuck your hands behind your back. Of course, I took two steps forward, <laughs> which he was really quick to correct me. And then uh, pretty aggressively uh, put me into handcuffs and then moved me on over to mm -hmm. an empty chair and sat me down there. Mm -hmm. And then Marilyn was next and then she came around the corner. Uh, they put handcuffs onto her. We had two house guests that, uh, from a very close friend of mine from Arizona. They came up to, to work with us for the summer. Uh, they, they had asked us, is there anybody else in the house here? Anybody else that uh, is, is living with you? And we said, well, we do have two young men in the back. That, and so mm -hmm. they escorted them out at gunpoint. Uh, one of them was only 17 mm -hmm. and uh, put him in handcuffs and held a gun at his head for I'm not sure how long. I mean, everything's, you know. Foggy. A little, little fog of war going on there. Yeah. And but then anyway, they, so. they, the juxtaposition is, I think they told us, like, don't worry, no one's being arrested today. And I thought, like, feels like arrested. I have my hands, I have guns pointed at me and my hands handcuffed behind my back. What do, why are, are we defining arrested different here? Because <laughs> I'm feeling pretty arrested right now. And, uh, and uh, then we asked if they had a warrant and they said, oh, don't worry about it. You'll get to see it. Yeah, we have a warrant. Uh, but they refused to show it. And then they quickly whisked me away and separated me. And almost before um, we even sat down in a separate room, they said, like, so you probably know why we're here. And I said, no, not really. And they said, well, we're looking for Nancy Pelosi's laptop. And I don't think I burst out <laughs> laughing. But I would have. I was, I was, I was pretty um, shocked inside. And I said something. I said, like, oh, really? That's a thing. So... Her laptop really was taken and is still at large. Good intel. Thanks for letting me know. What does that have to do with me? <laughs> and they said, well, we know that you were involved in it. We have video footage of you inside the Capitol. Um, we have hundreds of hours of footage that the public doesn't know we have from the Capitol cameras. And so we, we're 100% know that you were in there and that you were part of this. And, uh, you know, at this point, you're looking at a misdemeanor trespassing, but you know, if you cooperate with us and uh, we just want to know who else you were working with. And I was like, well, we're going to have a problem because I 100 percent know that I wasn't in the Capitol. And so we already like are on different paths here. And then he said, oh, so that's the way you want to go with it. So you want to go. You want us to put in our report that uh, you're obstructing justice and lying to an agent. And I said, no, I would like you to put the truth into your report and say that you have the wrong person. I wasn't inside the Capitol, but it's your report. I suppose you can put whatever you want in it. So uh, then he kept pushing on me and I thought, OK, these people are very committed. And then another agent said, we're 100 percent sure this is you. And I said, well, I'm 100 percent sure I wasn't in the Capitol. So one of us is going to have to be wrong and it's not going to be me. And I said, if you have all this supposed evidence, I'm going to need to see something because so far I don't even know who you guys are. Right. I don't even know if you're who and you And he was in another are. room while right. they were doing this. Mm -hmm. and, and what were they asking you similar questions? Yeah, they were asking. No, uh, they kept uh, well, you eventually yeah. Yeah, they, they, uh, we were just sitting there for probably what seemed like an hour before they started to interrogate me. And they showed mm -hmm. me pictures, but it was 
kind of strange. Like they were almost just kind of casually like, hey, here's a yearbook. Take a look here. It, it, it wasn't like, OK, now we're going to sit you down and we're going to have you mm-hmm. analyze these pictures. Is this you? I was just like, hey, check this out. By the way, is this you at the Capitol? I'm like, yeah, that's me. Is this you with your arm around a guy who's got an American flag around him? Like, yeah, that's me. And uh, now, and then they flipped a picture of her. It's like, now is this your wife inside the Capitol? I'm like, no. I'm like, <laughs> Capitol? We weren't even inside the Capitol. So that's mm-hmm. about the length of interrogation that I got. It wasn't yeah. really that and long. And did they, when you said that she wasn't in the Capitol, what did they say to you? They never did disagree with yeah. it. Okay. Uh, the the uh, agents that I was working with, uh, yeah, didn't, didn't make a big deal of it. They did with her, mm-hmm. but I think they just wanted to see if our stories matched. Gotcha. Of course they did. Gotcha. We just tell the yeah, truth. Yeah. 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 So, sorry, carry on. Yeah. So, I think uh, something I would not recommend anyone doing what we did. I would never recommend speaking to agents if the FBI calls you and wants to have a chat know that they're going to do a 302 report on you and anything you say can and will be held against you. Uh, if they bust into your door and say they have a warrant and they want to have a chat, um, just say no. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't answer questions and I uh, demand counsel because we asked if we could make a phone call and they said no. We asked if we could see the warrant. They said yeah, you'll get a copy of it. And I didn't find out until into the process that there's a game going on because right. we don't understand that right. we have a right to right. it. That when I finally said, like, we're not going any further until I see some ID from you and until I see the warrant, then all of a sudden everything stopped and they did what I said. Okay. And that's what I found. So, meanwhile, were they searching all around your house during this? Yeah. Yeah. They're just going everywhere. Other agents were going everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked them, I said, so if you guys are here watching us, who's watching your people? Because you have a really bad reputation. And I, how do I know that you're not yeah. planting the evidence that you're now going to find suddenly? And so he was a little irritable about that. Uh, did they end up producing any evidence showing that, did, did they show you a picture of someone that looked like you? or did, Yeah, what? so they did, when I said I needed to see some evidence, they did show one uh, distance footed, footage from the side of a woman, a still from a video inside, mm-hmm. and uh, a woman who's Caucasian, middle-aged, brown hair with a black coat. And I was like, that could be me inside the Capitol. Why is somebody photoshopping me in the Capitol? And they said, that's live footage. That's not Photoshop. That's from Capitol cameras. And I said, okay, so why does somebody in the Capitol Police want me to be inside the Capitol and photoshopping me into your footage? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, no, this is live footage. So, well, then you need to show me more because that's not very conclusive. And they refused to show me any more. And then several hours into it, the agent that was very convinced and had uh, been the one who the pers- agent. pursued the warrant yeah. came up and actually <clears throat> showed me a photocopy, like a uh, printed on just photo paper of the FBI photo that they had on, on their watch list, uh, which I didn't know there was one online. And she came up and she said, well, hey, we're looking for these clothes that you were wearing. And I was like, well, first of all, I already told you I wasn't inside, so I don't appreciate being called a liar. So we're going to stop that kind of conversation. And second of all, I don't even own a sweater. She's wearing a sweater. And I would never wear that ugly of a sweater. You'd have to pay me. (laughs) So, And I said, and she has detached earlobes. And I have attached earlobes. So obviously, I'm jealous and hate her because I've always wanted detached earlobes. (laughs) And you guys are the FBI. Can you? And I grabbed it from her and I said, can we both agree these are two different people? I'm sitting right here in front of you. Look at the picture and then look at me. Look at the picture. I had to speak slowly because she didn't seem to have a lot of cogniz. And she just stared at me for a minute. They stared at me and then grabbed the paper back and went back to searching. And I was like, okay, well, I'm very relieved and also very concerned because yeah. now I am very clear that what you have is actually not evidence that I was in the Capitol. But why do you still want to make it me? Right. Are you covering for that girl and wanting me to take the right. fall for her? Right. And so I asked those questions, and of course I wouldn't answer that. And eventually they, they had permission in the warrant to take, which they wouldn't allow me to read. I was allowed to look at it for a few brief seconds, but when I told them I was going to read it, they took it away, which is also not lawful, and I should have demanded it back instead of my rights to read it yeah. and to have counsel. And now I know. And we all need to know our rights because we're the lawful oversight 
right. as far as God's concerned in the kingdom and as far as the Constitution as Americans are concerned. Yeah. But we can't be mm -hmm. oversight if we don't know right. the, the law and what our rights are. So how long did this whole episode take? Mm, about four hours. Four yeah. hours. Mm -hmm. So they just bust in, guns everywhere, looking for Agents everything. Agents climbing everywhere. And how long did it take for them to ident realize it wasn't you? They never um, have owned that it's not that. me. Yeah. They are still uh, apparently indicating that there's still an open investigation. So I don't know what that means. Um, I do know that if based on the evidence they took, then all of us are probably under open investigation because other than our electronics, which were specifically listed in the warrant to take, uh, it said any papers or things that could that uh, indicated intent towards insurrection or violence at the Capitol or planning thereof. And, and this is the item they found and took. This is what they took from This me. is what they took as, and listed as evidence. The Declaration of Independence. And the Constitution, which you can get free at any why of your did they legislators. Take this? <laughs> That's the question. Why did they take this? And That's why the do question. they give them out free to all of us if they're then gonna collect them and use them as evidence against us? That is wild. So if this is evidence against us, then we all are on the list and we need to be concerned. So I'll never forget when I found out that this story was you guys. I heard from somebody else, this couple in Alaska, they got busted in. And then I got contacted by news sources because they knew that I knew you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't know this happened until I read it, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, what? <laughs> this is crazy!" And and uh, and then and, and, and we then, are so middle America. That's why it's so shocking. Yeah, I think because if such uneventful middle America people can be pulled into this dragnet, right. then all of us are just have not had our visit yet. Right. I would say everyone should expect a visit, and you need to tool up on your rights and be ready. Yeah. To engage. Well, and I think there's a couple things I, I would love for you to, to, in this final thing, just give us a charge for. First, that's one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. I'm <laughs> glad that you're alive. And are that's you traumatized true. from it? How do you feel? Like, Wow, that's a great question. Uh, well, there's, there's the initial shock and awe. And right. I think it took about two weeks to get through all of that to get to the place where I'm really angry about this. Right. They busted into my home, right. put me a gun Totally. Point, if I had grabbed... And you were just probably, I mean, from our conversations, just trying to help them find what they're looking for. Yes. Not yeah, realize yeah, it. Right oh, yeah. Look at we my gun out. safe. There's look my gun my, safe. And I'm, look at know. my this. Look at my that. Don't Cause, be yeah. helpful. Because you don't, don't have... The, I mean, you don't have anything to hide, obviously. No. no. And yeah, they exactly. still took stuff from you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They all still your data. Took, they still took stuff. They still have all of our data. And the reality is all the TV shows that we watch were trained... That if you're innocent, you cooperate, and if you're right. guilty, you you assert your rights. Right. And we have got to think differently. Right. If you're innocent, you assert your rights. Right. Everyone, if you're guilty, you assert your rights. That's what they're there for. They're for right. all of our protection. Right. And do not be naive and deceived. We uh, so far have gotten through. We don't know if we really have or not. But anything you say can and will will be held against you. Yeah. And if this is the criteria that is now being created to hold something against you, pretty much anything you say right. is gonna be held against you. Right. Don't talk to them. Don't talk to them. So I would say our my takeaway is realizing how much power we have. Right. I felt the power in the situation. I felt when I didn't know my rights and we gave them carte blanche to run over us in our house. Right. I also felt when I go let, got indignant when like, wait a minute, I have rights here. And I asserted them and everything stopped. Right. And they had to stand down. But right. we have to learn to stand and hold the line. Come on. Because otherwise mm. what's happening, there were good people there. There were good people in that raid. And they are being pressured by their higher ups right. to violate us. Right. And they need us to know our yeah. rights because the only protection they have to behave lawfully is that we stand on them and require them to. So they can answer to their higher right. ups. They stood on their rights and we had to stand down. We protect 
all of us when we do that. If yeah. we don't, we put all of us in jeopardy. Yeah. And we're headed to a 1984 episode if we, <laughs> as believers, don't yeah. start learning because we're the lawful oversight and believers in especially have abdicated culture and government. And now we're waking up and going like, wait a minute, right. what's happening? Right. It's because the salt and the light left. Right. We have to come back into the equation. Well, and, and, that, and that's yeah. that's exactly why. I mean, this is why we're doing this whole initiative and, and encouraging people to engage mm -hmm. in the in the discourse and encourage people to engage politically. Mm -hmm. You were saying when you you were angry, you were like finally came to oh, oh you know came awake. Yeah. And then, where did that lead you to? Just based upon my belief system, my faith, I knew that there has to be an end to that. That right. anger that mm -hmm. lasted for half a day, yeah. but okay, I am not an angry mm -hmm. person, and the supernatural mm -hmm. peace medicine. The very moment I came around the corner and saw the seven guns pointed at me, it was, yeah. I mm -hmm. have never laughed so much in my life and had so much peace in the middle of the storm that we just walked right. through. But it was mm -hmm. so cool to have had that peace yeah. and mm -hmm. to not get overrun by the feeling of, of being traumatized right. and being manipulated. Mm -hmm. Uh, it took us to a different place that had to be supernatural. There's right. no other way to explain it. So it's almost like, I mean, in, in some ways, the Lord may have prepared you for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, now you've been on every major you know, program sharing about this. The story's gone out there. Hopefully, this is what this podcast will do. God stuck you right in the center of this. Mm -hmm. You know, innocent, mm -hmm. $36 ticket to DC, right. <laughs> hearing a message, all of a sudden you have the FBI rating you. Mm -hmm. What what do you say to, I mean, this is a crazy time we're living in there. I was yeah. reading today, there's 500 or 600 people that are, are still right. uh, arrested. A lot right. of them are being prosecuted yep. uh, right mm -hmm. now. This is the biggest a single investigation of the Department of Justice in history, mm -hmm. American oh, history, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. of its, its own people right now. And, and you know, I always thought it was crazy to me, you know, you have these guys uh, taking over the Capitol with no weapons. Right. And, <laughs> and of course, they're ham you know, the guy with face paint and horns and everything is going to get 25 years in prison <sighs> or whatever. Crazy. For being crazy. Now he is crazy, but right. I mean, he's <laughs> walking through <laughs> the Capitol. Crazy is not illegal. I know. Well, crazy yeah. Crazy is not illegal. And, and, and not I mean, illegal. yeah, don't, don't be in the Capitol. That's dumb. I mean, don't, yeah. like, right. obviously, yeah. but, but America was burning last summer. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, I was there. I was in the cities, man. They were destroying the cities of America. Mm -hmm. They were burning to yeah. the ground. And yet, that same investigation for people that actually destroyed entire cities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like I, I'm saying that because I witnessed it. Yeah, you and know, hand slaps. And and not not even that. Yeah. I mean, Portland just saying, ah, oh, just let them all go. Yeah. We don't even have the capacity. We don't have the resources. <laughs> but yet we can send seven FBI agents to Homer, Alaska. Mm -hmm. From D.C. From D.C. because yep. we have the resources because you kind of look like somebody mm -hmm. that we thought might yeah. have taken Pelosi's laptop, which we told everybody doesn't have anything on it. Right. Okay, there's sure. nothing on it. Right. Right. Sure, there's nothing, nothing there. on it, of right. course. Nothing to see here. So, so I mean, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole too far, but but this is what I want to leave people with. What do we do as believers in this time? It's crazy. And you you guys have experienced it. Mm -hmm. I mean, two of the kindest people I know mm -hmm. got thrown right in the middle of this. Um, what is your advice to believers? What is your advice to Christians in America right now? Oh, we have to know who we are. Mm -hmm. We have to know that we will inherit the kingdom, that we are, we are kings and priests unto our God. We better know where we stand mm -hmm. first, what our identity is, mm -hmm. find out the authority that we have, and then walk in that authority mm -hmm. to, to look at history, look back and see what the Founding Fathers were all about. Yes, mm -hmm. I don't care how you slice it, dice it. This country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. If right. you don't agree with me, mm -hmm. You just have to go find the truth, but that's the reality of it. So we had a pretty solid footing, not perfect, but I think as good of a footing as mankind could ever yeah. find governmentally. Right. So that was passed down to us as Americans. That's our inheritance. We better understand what's been given to us, mm -hmm. our rights. That Bill of Rights is sacred. 
uh, to have it trampled upon would leave George Washington and James Madison and Jefferson, all those guys rolling in their graves. If, if they could see what's mm -hmm. going on today, they would be appalled at mm -hmm. the bloodshed that they saw take place so that we could have the right to be where we're at today. So I think we need to find out, A, what is history, mm -hmm. what are our rights, and then find out who we are as kings and priests mm -hmm. and, unto our God and find mm -hmm. out how we're supposed to walk this out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and I would, I would echo that and say that as we rediscover our identity, that as believers, there's a call. Messiah, uh, when he was here, his last directive was to disciple nations. Yeah. And instead of discipling nations, we've been sitting in churches and doing our own lives and hoping everything will be okay till yeah. he returns. And that's not what he asked us to do. Yeah. So I think we need to repent we need to take ownership for where we are because if the site, the the light and salt vacate, then you have corruption yeah. take hold. It's a vacuum. We left yeah. a vacuum, yeah. and others filled it. So we have to come and start respectfully and authoritatively and lawfully taking our place again. Mm -hmm. And as we take our place, I believe that when we say these things are happening, these are, things are happening by other people peopling those positions. Right. We have to remind them who they are. Right. And we've, we've allowed the tyranny of civil law and regulations and codes become our norm, but we were created under a common law, which is the recognition of individual uh, integrity, sovereignty, yeah. and, and kingship. And alienable rights. And unalienable rights. rights. Yeah. But if we keep agreeing with all the fighting over statutes and codes, we aren't going to get back enough to the basics right. of the basics because that's yeah. not really where the yeah. fight is. So we need to learn our right. We need to yeah. memorize the Bill yeah. of Rights, the first 10, because right. those were the ones that came with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. The Founding Fathers felt so strongly about it, they would not ratify the Constitution without those first 10. Yeah. And those 10 are ours. They're given from God, but they're affirmed there. Right. And so we need to affirm those, and we need to know our place with God so we know yeah. where they come from. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I feel like there's so many takeaways from this story for me. One of them, I think a glaring one is, the FBI is not that smart, you know. I mean, I, for them to waste this I'm amount shocked. of for them, for them to waste this amount of resources. I mean, it's not like we haven't been. Their intelligence looking. was not that fabulously intelligent. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not like we haven't been looking on our phones for facial recognition right? for years, and they can't find out that you're not the same person. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's absolutely unbelievable to me. Mm -hmm. So they're not that smart. And there's definitely, they will push till the max yes. until yep. we take a stand. Yep. Yes. Exactly. They will push for everything, yes. you know. Absolutely. And I think that's a takeaway. And then three, like the Lord has, had, you know, for such time as this, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, he's put people like you mm -hmm. in the position that you're in right now. Mm -hmm. And and there's a stewardship element, yes. not only to tell the story, but also to encourage other Christians, yes. hey, listen, like we have a call mm -hmm. yes. to be salt and light. And even in situations like this, yeah. where what's the takeaway? Where, where are you guys going with this from here? What's your response? We, Beyond uh, sharing your story yeah, and everything we, else. We have looked at legal options. And that's not normally who we are. We're not right. so happy people looking for fame and fortune, but the only pushback that the government will understand is if we do make a stand legally, right. yeah. we have done that in the uh, the federal courts in Anchorage. Okay. We've made the stand to say, no, that warrant is an illegal warrant. Right. This is an illegal search, although we haven't right. got to that point yet. We just simply are addressing the, the warrant mm -hmm. that was put out. No, that's not Maryland mm -hmm. in the photos and making a statement and going, no, that is incorrect and our rights were violated. Yeah. That's where this has started so far. We haven't and, heard and, back and, at all. And people have stood up for you, like yeah. Congressman Jim Jordan. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Stood yeah. up and grilled yeah. the FBI. Yeah. Uh, We've really had amazing support and I am getting flooded with people's stories that have been accosted by FBI and other ABC agencies or police um, or you know law enforcement regulators. And my concern is uh, we've gotten a lot of positive support. There's a lot of people out there that these things are happening to, right. but they didn't say the magic words, Nancy Pelosi's laptop. And so the story disappeared right. and they never got support. So we've started a wethepeoplestand.org org. Okay. And as we're learning, 
where we abdicated our rights and where we could have stood more firmly. Yeah. We want to be helping train all of us up because if we become trained up, then we empower all of us. And uh, so that I'm really passionate about, we're really passionate about and being able to reach out. Uh, we're in the process of, of creating a GoFundMe for some reason, it never quite happens, but starting a GoFundMe to help fund uh, the process of pushing back lawfully, which is right. in the court system, right. and to help fund others who need support, who aren't right. getting the a attention or may not have the resources right. we do um, to push back on our own. So we want to help all of us. Well, and that's a that's a core component of, of, of why we're starting this and why we want to engage people, you know, whether it's government overreach, mm -hmm. you know, mayors or governors telling us we can't worship outside to mm -hmm. FBI right. agents so, unlawfully. Yeah entering your home um yeah. i think all of Statues that stuff and regulations yeah, are using. all of that stuff we have to take a stand so yeah i love you guys thank yeah, you so much for coming too. on here thanks for sharing your story and if you want to keep following them the website again we the people stand we the people stand .org. and you should go stay at their epic <laughs> inn in homer it's incredible thanks guys thank you, thank you so much pleasure yeah